Remember Batman? Yeah, he's a cool superhero, right? Well, he wasn't always. You know, back in the beginning, he had to figure out how to become a superhero. He had to make mistakes because in the end, Batman is only human. Now keep in mind, this is in a different continuity. This is not in the main storyline. It's a universe known as Earth One. And if you enjoy this version of Batman and you want to see the Superman version, the Teen Titans version, the Wonder Woman version, we can bring you those. This is our first attempt at an Earth One book. So let me know what you guys think. Enjoy the video and I'll see you at the ending. Along the Gotham rooftops, a man runs, trying to get away from a dark shadow that's chasing him. Batman stands and grabs his grappling hook and he takes aim and then he fires. But instead of Launching the anchor, the spool breaks and entangles, making the tool useless. The man continues to try and escape, jumping off another roof, and Bruce quickly chases after him. Except when Bruce leaps, he falls short and he tumbles all the way to the ground. He lays on a pile of garbage and he quietly says, Ow! Oh, and he hears another call for help. He gets up to see a pair of robbers fleeing from a restaurant, but rather than being helpful, he turns and he walks away. When Bruce turns to the corner to an alleyway, a drifter looks up at him and tells them, Please! Don't hurt me. I was just trying to keep warm. He looks at the woman and then he hands her some money and then he drives off without saying a word. What led Bruce to becoming the Caped Crusader? Failing horribly on his first night out. Long ago at the Wayne Mansion, Alfred Pennyworth visited Thomas Wayne during his campaign at becoming the mayor of Gotham. As Alfred knocks on the wooden doors, a butler opens up and says that they've been expecting him. And seconds later, Thomas himself runs up telling him that he can't believe he's actually here. Thomas hands Alfred's bags to the butler. And Alfred looks around telling him that it looks like the medical tech business is really paying for itself, huh? Thomas laughs telling him actually it was Martha's great-grandfather who built this place. The two walk into the main room while everyone celebrates and Alfred says that he's read up on the opposing candidate. He's a real questionable character, but it looks like he doesn't have a chance. Thomas tells him the party is a little premature. The election isn't for a few more days, and that's when Martha comes in telling them that they just need to enjoy the moment while they can. Thomas then tells Alfred that he would like to introduce his campaign manager and his wife. Alfred stops himself, telling him that he's an advocate for the rights of the mentally ill. She's just as famous as Thomas Wayne. Martha shakes Alfred's hand, saying that after all of these years, she gets to meet the man who saved her husband's life. And Alfred says, well, he was also the one who helped him walk again. Martha then says that he needs to meet their son, Bruce, and she shouts across the room for her boy to come over. As Martha goes off looking, Alfred tells tells Thomas that he knows why he was called here. With all of the death threats, he needed someone that he could trust because there could be someone close to making them. Thomas says once he's elected, they'll get to work. But for tonight, he just wants to be a father. Bruce then runs over shouting, come on, we have to hurry or we're going to miss the movie. Alfred tells Thomas to hang on. He shouldn't go out like this. Let him come along and be the bodyguard. But Thomas stops him and tells him that they go out every week as a family and that will not change. All he wants is to make sure that Bruce grows up to have a normal life. Alfred throws his arms out telling him that this is nowhere near normal. Normal. This mansion, butlers and cooks, being a Wayne is not normal. Life's ugly outside of this place. Thomas looks at Alfred and he says, I know how ugly life can be, but everything we did in the desert, I'm never going to forget that. But I have to take my leave. My family is waiting on me right now, Alfred. A short while later, down at the theater, Bruce shouts that they're going to sit in the first row. But just as they take their seats, the lights go out. One of the ushers steps in, shining his light, telling them that he's sorry, but it looks like the power to the entire theater was cut. If everyone can make their way to the front exit, please. Bruce jumps up from his chair, shouting, Come on! There's another theater a few blocks away! If we hurry, we can make it! And then he runs for the back exit. As he runs into the alley, he bumps into a hooded man who tells him to watch where he's going. Bruce stops and he turns back telling him that he doesn't have to do anything. His parents are the richest people in Gotham. The hooded man stands there for a moment and he says, ah, you're the wing kid. A few seconds later, Thomas and Martha come out looking for their son and the hooded man grabs Bruce and he pulls out a gun. Thomas tells the man to wait. And the man shouts that he wants his wallet and jewelry now. But before Thomas can even reach for his wallet, the man lunges grabbing Martha's necklace and when Thomas tries to stop him, there were two shots. The robber turns and he runs off and all Bruce can do is stare at the lifeless bodies of his parents. Later, back at the mansion, police begin putting their reports together as Alfred tells them that he knows that there were threats made. He wants a list of suspects and he wants to help. And one of the officers says that he knows about his background with the Royal Marines and the security firm that he worked for in Seoul. But this is an investigation the police will be handling. The woman next to the officer then says that there is something else that they need to talk about and that's the fact that the Waynes have named him the child's legal guardian in case something was to ever happen. Alfred stunned. He stares for a moment and he says, wait, wait, I'm not a parent. There has to be someone else who can watch him. What happens if I say no? The woman says actually Thomas and Martha were the last of their respective families. And if he says no, Bruce will go into child services and then into foster care. Later as the police leave, Alfred pulls up a chair to the table that Bruce is sitting at. And he says that he understands what's going on, but he has to eat. Bruce looks up and he stares and he asks, Who the hell are you? And Alfred sighs, telling him, I'm your new butler. 
Back in the current times, Bruce walks into the house and Alfred asks, is this really my life now? Bruce pulls back the mask stating that others may have given up, but he won't. Over at the Gotham PD, Detective Jim Gordon sits at his desk when he is called into the captain's office. Jim, a man who understands what Gotham is really like, shuffles into the office asking what is it. The captain says that he would like to introduce him to his new partner, Harvey Bullock. Harvey smiles stating that he's pretty sure that they all know who he is. Hosted Hollywood Detective all five seasons. Jim stares at Harvey and he tells him that he doesn't watch much TV and Harvey tells him that's fine, I'll get you a copy of it on Blu-ray. As the two walk off, Jim asks asks who in their right mind transfers to Gotham. And Harvey throws his arm around Jim, telling him that he needed a challenge. He needed to work on one particular case, the murder of the Waynes. Back with Bruce, he stares at a suit of armor displaying a bat signia. Alfred walks in asking, why a bat? All because of that day that we opened up the mausoleum and they scared you? Well, the people you're hunting don't get scared. Bruce looks back and he tells him, everyone gets scared, Alfred. And Alfred looks at him, I've taught you how to protect yourself and even more, now it's time for me to leave. I didn't teach you how to fight so that you can go on some insane crusade. Bruce shouts, I'm not crazy. The mayor had both of my parents killed because my father would have taken the polls. Alfred angrily tells him that he bloody knows what happened. And Bruce then asks, what do you know about the man that I was chasing? Jacob Weaver. The man you were chasing tonight used to be a cop. He was one of the first ones in the scene at the night of the murder. He then quit the force and started to work for the mayor a week after. Jacob has something, the lighter that he gave his father for Christmas before he died. Alfred stands for a moment and then he takes his cane, hitting the broken grappling hook, telling him, fine, but we need guns. And Bruce quickly tells him, no guns. Alfred goes on telling him, these kind of people you're looking for are corrupt. Gadgets are not going to scare them or work. And Bruce looks off and says, maybe I'll find someone who can make them work. Later, at the Wayne Medical Group building, he finds someone who can help, Mr. Lucius Fox. Bruce tells Lucius that he understands that he is the lead designer on the neuroprosthetics processor, and he was hoping that he could get some help on something else. Bruce hands over the broken grappling hook, telling him that he wants to keep this between them. Lucius tells him that he works in the medical technology, and yes, he can fix this. Also, there aren't any mountains in Gotham for you to climb, Mr. Wayne. Why do you need a grappling hook? Bruce takes out his umbrella and he walks out, telling him, sure there are. The next day out on the streets, Jim and Harvey make their way to the security detail for the mayor, when Harvey spots a man beating another man on the sidewalk. Harvey tells Jim to stop the car, but Jim tells him it's not their business. Besides, they're already late. As the light turns red, Harvey jumps out of the car and he runs to the larger man, telling him that he would like him to put his hands into the air. The man turns back swinging and Harvey ducks the hit and then lands a punch in the man's gut. Harvey calls to Jim, telling him to bring the cuffs over, and Jim runs over telling Harvey to let the man go. Harvey asks, what, is this guy an informant or something? And Jim turns to the man telling him, hey, I'm sorry, Axe, this guy's new. Axe fixes his jacket and says, yeah, well, you better teach the new guy quick before any accidents happen. That punk you just let go owed me some money, and now you owe me some money, Gordon. As Axe walks off, Harvey asks, what the hell was that? And Jim shouts for him to get back in the damn car. This place has rules we follow, and once you learn that, you'll head back to Los Angeles, so don't judge me. Later that night, Bruce sits in the back of his car, looking at the new and improved grappling hook, stating that he actually fixed it. Alpha says that he needs to be careful. Everyone is going to want a piece of Bruce Wayne since he hasn't been a public figure in a long time. As Alfred pulls up to the mayor's party, Oswald tells Bruce that it was a pleasure to meet him. Mayor Oswald Cobblepot at your service. Inside, Jim and Harvey keep watch while Harvey enjoys the other views of the party when Jim spots him. Harvey notices Jim looking off and he says, wow, Bruce Wayne is really here. Harvey puts on a smile stating, it's showtime, and he makes his way through the crowds to Bruce telling him his name, and he says that he's working on his parents' case and would love to talk to him about it. Bruce looks at him and he says, you're the police officer from the TV. And Harvey's smile grows bigger. Yes, Hollywood detectives, no crime is unsolvable. Bruce tells him, right, that show just got canceled, didn't it? And he walks off. As Bruce leaves, Harvey under his breath simply says, jerk. However, for Bruce, he isn't here to enjoy the party. He's here looking for Jacob Weaver, and he spots him leaving for the roof. Once on the roof, Jacob lights up his cigarette with Thomas's lighter, and that's when Batman quickly slams him into a wall, grabbing the lighter, asking, where did you get this? Before Jacob can answer, Batman is struck in the back of the head with a brick, and Jacob laughs. Ha ha, I'm not the only one up here for a smoke. As the men surround Bruce, one radios in that they have some trouble on the roof. Some guy in a bat costume. Batman tries to fight off the attacks as Jim and the other officers make their way up there and Bruce lunges, hitting the first person that he can, which is Jim Gordon. He scoops up the lighter and the other officers begin to fire their guns and one grazes Bruce's head. He tries to catch himself, but as he stumbles over the ledge, he lets go of the lighter in the process. And with no other choice than to test the untested grappling hook, he fires it. The anchor hits into the building and then he swings himself, crashing through the party. Everyone turns to see what's going on and then he lands right on top of one of the dinner tables. The officers run back in and yell for this Batman to freeze, and without even saying anything, he throws two smoke bombs down and makes a break for the kitchen. Outside, 
Alfred watches Batman jump through a window, and he runs over to help him into the car. As Bruce's vision is fading, he remembers back to when he was younger, and him and his mother walked by their old house. He looked up at the old rundown home, and he asked, why is the dirt red? Is it blood? And she told him, no, it's rust. He just needs to promise her something. Bad things happened in that place, and promise her that he will never go inside. He thought back to the stories of how Martha's mother killed her father, and then jumped off the roof, killing herself. And he says that he promises. But then the name Batman rings out, as Bruce wakes up in his bed to a news report about a lunatic who crashed to the mayor's party. Not only is Bruce watching, but so is Oswald Cobblepot. And he asks Jacob, why would somebody want you? Jacob nervously says, I don't know, that guy's just crazy. Who knows what he wanted? Oswald tells him, get out. And as he does, he tells another man, I have enough problems with the dents digging around. Call in the birthday boy to fix this. Back with Bruce, he gets up to grab something to eat when he notices the lighter that Jacob had taken sitting on the countertop. He looks at it and Alfred walks in telling him that that could have gone better. The whole thing was supposed to be done quietly. Now everyone knows that he's out there. Bruce holds up the lighter and he asks, how did he get this? And Alfred says that he dropped it in the alley, but he needs to stop this. He's not ready for this. Bruce looks at him and he says, yes, yes he is. And Alfred slaps him to the ground. Bruce gets up and he tells Alfred, don't do this. And Alfred eggs him on asking, or what? Show me I'm wrong. Show me that you're not just some entitled brat who isn't even close to ready. Bruce tackles Alfred into a wall and Alfred elbows hitting Bruce telling him, you've never seen war. And then he cracks his cane across his face. Bruce grabs Alfred's arm and he throws him into the grandfather clock and as he continues to attack him, Alfred dodges telling him, emotional, sloppy, soft. He then continues to beat on Bruce shouting, you can't do it. You aren't even willing to sink down to Gotham's level. But just then, Bruce kicks Alfred's prosthetic leg, breaking it at the knee. Alfred slams to the ground and Bruce gets up, getting ready to say he's sorry, but then he stops himself and he says, I will do everything that I have to. I will do it myself. He walks out of the room and Alfred laughs, telling him, ha ha ha, bloody hell, maybe you are ready. Meanwhile, back with Jacob, he puts the key into the lock of his apartment and the door swings open on its own. Inside on the table is a cake that reads, happy birthday, Jacob. And a voice telling him, make a wish. Jacob turns around to see a large man standing in the shadows going on, telling him, but you can't tell anyone though. And he pulls out a knife. Back at Gotham PD, Harvey makes his way down to the cold case room and he tells the workers that he needs to get some files on Thomas and Martha Wayne. The worker says, right, you're not even fully registered yet. Check back in another day. Harvey rubs his head telling him, oh no, my partner James Gordon is going to yell at me again. The worker stares at him for a moment and then he slides out the sign of sheet telling him, just use Jim's name and get it over with. However, as the request is put in, another worker sees the files have been taken, and he calls one of Oswald Cobblepot's assistants, telling him, yeah, someone's snooping around again. Someone named James Gordon. Later over at Jim's house, Gordon gets ready for dinner for him and Barbara when there's a knock at the door. He opens it up, and Harvey lets himself in, telling him that he found out some stuff. Jacob Weaver was one of the first people on the scene of the Wayne's murders, and now he's dead. Jim stares at him, telling him, just get the hell out already. And then the phone rings with Barbara's mother on the other side. He picks it up, and on the other line, Axe tells him, whatever happens to your daughter is up to you. You might want to put those cold case files back where you found them. As Jim looks over, he sees the case files that Harvey is holding, and he grabs him, shouting, you stupid bastard! You checked those out under my name? They have Barbara! Harvey asks who? And Jim shouts, the real Gotham! The people who control this city! The same people who killed my wife! Jim then says, let's go! Look, I used to be like you. I took on anything and everything, and then my wife died by an accident. All I have left is Barbara, and I can't lose her. Harvey looks at the bat that was knocked over, and he picks it up, asking, do you know what corner Axe works on? We should go see if he likes baseball. Out on the streets, Axe calls up a couple of passing girls when he's suddenly cracked in the back of the head with a bat. He looks up and he sees Jim and he asks, what's this supposed to be? Good cop, bad cop? And Harvey smiles, telling him, come on, this is Gotham City. It's bad cop, bad cop. Over at Jacob's apartment, Bruce begins to go over the crime scene when he notices the red dust on the ground. He looks at it and he notices that it is rust, the same type of rust from Arkham. He heads over to the old asylum to find it still locked and then he hears somebody call for help. Inside, Barbara is sitting in a children's room screaming for help trying to wiggle out of her bindings. The door begins to creak open and Barbara tries again, falling out of her chair. The birthday boy walks in holding a cake, telling Barbara, make a wish. Shortly after Bruce makes his way in, Jim and Harvey arrive with their lead, Axe. And when they get inside, Jim quickly notices someone behind him and he sees Batman. He points his gun at him, shouting, where's my daughter? And Batman quickly smacks the gun out of his hands. He grabs him, telling him, I don't know anything about your daughter. And Jim fights back, telling him, I know my daughter's here. As they go back, 
back and forth. There's a scream, stay away from me! And everyone stops to listen. Back in the child's room, Barbara grabs a broken chair leg and swings it, stabbing into the birthday boy's leg, trying to get him away. Jim shouts, asking, where did that come from? And Batman puts his ear to the wall. Jim asks, what the hell are you? And then Batman breaks through the brittle wall into the child's room. Birthday boy turns to him and swings his knife, telling him, you weren't invited. After slamming Batman into the table, Jim runs in grabbing his daughter and he turns back shooting the birthday boy in the shoulder. However, with his large frame, he reaches out grabbing Jim by the wrist and he begins to crush it. He gets back up jumping on birthday boy and he shouts for everyone to run. As birthday boy tries to ram Batman into the wall, it gives way and the two fall to the lower level. Across the hallway, Harvey sees the scuffle and he shouts for Batman to get out of the way so that he can take a shot. Batman doesn't listen and he kicks the knife out of the birthday boy's hand, sticking it into the wall. He then tries punching the birthday boy, but because of his muscle, the hits are ineffective. Harvey then jumps at the birthday boy. However, he grabs Harvey and throws him into the floor, causing him to fall. As Harvey gets back up, he notices something and then he lights up his lighter and he stares at the horrible thing that is before him. Back upstairs, the struggles between Batman and the birthday boy go on. Batman uses his cape to strangle and knock the birthday boy out. And Batman makes his way down to help Harvey out of the hole. As the two get up, Harvey winces and says that there were so many bodies. What did I just see down there? Batman looks down and he tells him, evil, real evil. Later, over at Oswald's office, one of his men shouts that they have a problem, but doesn't say anything further. Oswald shouts for him to answer him, tell him what's going on. And the man is thrown into Oswald's office. He stares at Batman, asking, who are you supposed to be? And Batman grits his teeth, telling him, I am vengeance. Oswald starts to laugh. Isn't that a bit dramatic? And Batman responds by punching him in the face. He then grabs him, telling him, you've spent years getting fat and rich off of the people of Gotham. Things should have been different. And then he tosses Oswald over his desk. He grabs his umbrella, telling Batman to stay back, and Batman asks, and what are you gonna do with that? Then Batman feels a sharp pain, and Oswald takes the needle tip and stabs it into him. As he falls to his knees, he then asks, did you come here to kill me? You shouldn't have made so much noise, so who are you underneath that mask? Batman's mask is pulled back, and he shouts, Bruce Wayne? Through the blood dripping from Bruce's lips, he says, you had my parents killed. You took them from me. Oswald grips his umbrella, telling him, it all makes sense now. Somehow, you found out that Jacob cut the power to the theater, but instead of going up front, they went out back. He then stabs back down to the Bruce's shoulder, telling him, I worked hard to make that plan work. And then someone else came by and shot them for me. He then holds the tip of the umbrella to Bruce's neck, telling him, there are two types of people in this city, predators and prey. And just before the final blow can be delivered, a voice then says, there's also a third, survivors. In the doorway, Alfred stands holding a shotgun, and Oswald tells him, you move, I'll shoot. So Alfred pulls the trigger. The force of the shotgun knocks Oswald out the window and he lands in the street. Later, the news reports that Mayor Oswald Cobblepot's death comes as no surprise with his illegal and corrupt activities. Ray Salinger, better known as the birthday boy serial killer, has been arrested, and people believe that the man known as Batman is behind all of this. Lucius watches on the news while he finishes his work on some new batarangs, and the TV goes on stating, Jessica Dent has just been sworn in as the city's new mayor. Over at the station, the cops watch when suddenly Axe is thrown into the room in handcuffs. The cops look at Axe's beaten body and they ask what happened, and Jim says, He walked in front of my car. Another officer says that they can't arrest him, and Jim asks, Why not? Who else can't we arrest? Who else is gonna let the city be owned by this criminal scum? He turns and he storms out, telling them, I won't. Not anymore. And someone wash out my trunk. Out on the street, Harvey shuffles through, still having images of all of the bodies that he witnessed wrecking his mind. He walks into a store and the man behind the counter asks, what can he get him? He stares up at a giant wall of liquor and he says, whatever's the strongest. Back at the Wayne mansion, Bruce looks up at a portrait of his parents and Alfred says that it was just the wrong alley at the wrong time. There is no conspiracy. So it's time to put the costume away. Stop this. Bruce closes his eyes and he tells him, I can't. I can never stop. Now I will always be alone. Alfred places his hand on Bruce's shoulder and then he hugs him, telling him, you've never been alone. And with that, Bruce set out to stop the crimes of Gotham City, always remembering what Alfred said, that he doesn't need to be a better Batman, he needs to build a legend. Elsewhere, though, a man looks at the newspaper clippings, asking, who is Batman? He scratches his head, stating, yes, what a riddle this is. And there you have it. Some of the early days of Batman with a true Batman adventure and story. I loved it. I thought Batman Earth 1 was great, and there actually is a part two in which he continues the adventure. But like I said, there's other books in the Earth 1 line, so let me know if you want to know more about this alternate universe. We can start bringing you Earth 1 books. Don't forget to click right here for something else on our channel, and right over here for something recommended by YouTube. Subscribe to get yourself daily comic book knowledge bombs, and I'll see you next time right here.